here with Nick Holton, the number 71 Outlaw figure eight driver, last race, third place. How are you feeling about today? Um, feeling pretty good. Uh, been working on the car all day and feel like we're getting faster, so just setting up for the main event and hopefully we can have a good finish tonight. And how are the track conditions out there today? Uh, track's better today. It's still greasy and slimy, so car is still all sideways everywhere, but it's better than last week, which is a good thing. Anybody you want to thank to get the 71 car to the track today? Uh, all my sponsors, Northwest Adventure Rentals, Conley Family Roadside, uh, Fishing with Bros. Uh, I got to thank my parents, um, Wilkinson Racing, Boney Brothers Racing, and everybody that helps out. All right. Thank you, Nick Holton. Good luck tonight. And thank you, Brandy and uh, Nick. I've been so impressed with that kid, young good young head on his shoulders and uh, looking for good things to come for him. Before we bring you to the lineup, I want to remind you that Bud Light Seltzer is unquestionably good with black cherry, lemon lime, strawberry, and mango. A refreshing Bud Light Seltzer has less than two carbs and is your perfect summer refreshment. It's 20 laps for it the is. Frank's Radio Outlaw figure eight car. Starting on the pole will be the 55 car of Doug Wilkinson. Outside of Doug will be the gentleman we met just a minute ago, the 71 of Nick Holton. The 50 car will be inside of row two. That's John the Cowboy Carlson outside the 33 car of Nick Gunderson. And rounding out the field in the zero car is Jillian Lopato. All right, here we go. 20 laps coming up. If you were with us last time, we had the outlaw figure eights on home track heroes. Uh, pretty exciting uh, <laughs> a couple of laps in that one. Uh, involving the 55 and the 74. The 74 we don't see out here tonight, but Doug Wilkinson has gotten that 55 car back up and running. And John Carlson, our points leader, coming into tonight's action. He is leading with his two main event wins. Let's see if he can come up with another one here for our Frank's Radio Service Outlaw Figure Eight. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, you know, and right now the the drivers are starting to think about points. They if they shouldn't be at any other point in the time <laughs> of the year, but now it's getting, you know, they've only got a couple of events left, yeah. maybe. So you start looking at them, as you said, Carlson out front by at eight points over Gunderson. Um, those two are kind of battling for the championship. Nick Holton's in third place uh, with a very, very outside chance of, of uh, getting up there and making that uh, 2020 crown his, but I think it's gonna come down between Carlson and of course, Nick Gunderson, and they're two of the best. True, they are, and, and they both have been doing this for so long, as has Doug Wilkinson, Jillian Lopato, fairly new into this, and obviously Nick Holton, who uh, I, I really like that young man. He's, he's got a future in racing, whether he sticks with figure eights or whether he can get into an oval track ride. It'd be kind of cool to see what that young man can do. You know, and, and kind of changing the subject up just a little bit, but a big shout out to Thomas Danfield, um, he has run roughshod over the NASCAR mini stocks here at yes. Evergreen Speedway. Yes. But, you know, we, last week on the show made a comment that they're kind of closing up on him a little bit. He wasn't so far out front. But back to the story, Thomas and his crew loaded up the car, drove down to Madera, California for the uh, first Olga California Dream 100, mm -hmm. 100 laps at Madera Speedway. And uh, our own Evergreen Speedway, Tom Stanfield, Thomas Stanfield, absolutely kicked the crap out of this California Boy, guys. Did. So he, did. he was really cool. The top three cars were out of the state of Washington. The first place car from Evergreen Speedway, second from South Sound Speedway. And uh, Mr. Rhodes from the Tri-Cities area rounded up that top three. But uh, really, really cool to see that that car, it's been good here, is good <laughs> wherever it goes. Yeah, that thing was really impressive. I, I got to watch it on, uh, it's called Short Track TV, uh, which is a, uh, a it was on Facebook, but Mav TV also recorded it. So it'll be coming up. Check your local listings if you get Mav TV, and you can see what it is that we're talking about. The oldest California Dream 100. Put on uh, our friend Bob Copley, who Tom and I have known forever, uh, is the best friend a four-cylinder race car will ever have, and is so enthusiastic about the potential of these things. And didn't quite get the car count he wanted for, but he just puts every fiber of his being into putting these races on and trying to bring awareness to four-cylinder motorsports and uh, really did a, a great job. And it was a fun race to watch. So congratulations, Thomas. Yeah. We'll see you back here, I believe, next week. Yeah, I would think so. Yes, next week. And, and you know, I, I talked to Bob on the way up here today, and, and uh, there was a little skip in his step, and I couldn't see that. But he said it was a cool race, top to bottom. Everybody's so good. 100 laps, two yellows, 
And he said, no fighting, no grumbling, no nothing. And he, yeah. it's kind of uh, revived him after a kind of a tough year and losing Olga, you know, a few months ago. And Bob, if you're watching, Tom is kind of running low on Lucas. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, let's get back to it. We are working lap number 13 of our Frank's Radio Service Outlaw figure eights. And a great move by Nick Gunderson working on the inside of uh, Nick Holton in the 71. Meanwhile, Doug Wilkinson in the 55 has done check out on this one. Well, as I say that, now he's got a cowboy <laughs> right on the back end of him. But the top two have really moved away from uh, that battle between Gunderson and Holton with Jillian Lopato still in the scene. You can see her in the orange car just going across the start finish line as we're going to be uh, working with five laps to go when they bring that 55 and the 50 car boy those if you could calculate how much time these two uh, Wilkinson and Carlson have spent over the decades <laughs> they've been out here uh, it, it's a pretty substantial amount of time and uh, the, those two know each other like the back of their hand and it would be kind of cool to see if which way that uh, Carlson's going to try and figure out if he can get around the 55 Doug knows how to make that race car severely wide and uh, knows uh, knows Cowboy really well. So top two right there, you can see him in the middle of your screen. Working turns one and two as the figure eight course runs from the north to the south here at Evergreen Speedway. A little bit of a short field tonight. These cars are expensive to run they are. and operate. And obviously we all know that uh, there's some difficulties going on in our world right now, but you get a whole field of these things out there. Oh, and oh man, that intersection, amazing. you know, last couple of weeks, uh, we probably sound like some pretty good fans <laughs> just doing this because there's been some yeah. absolutely cool shots of the intersection with the drone and some of the stuff we've had, you know, the stinger rates. Mm -hmm. They put on a great show. They really do. There's a nice shot of Nick Gunderson's Gunderson speed shot number 33 entry as the laps and the sun are going down here on our on our Frank's Radio Service figure eight final lap. You see the white flag right there with Doug Wilkinson and another car link back to the number 50 of the Cowboy, John Carlson, as we will bring him up to our Angel of the Winds winner's circle here in a few seconds as Doug Wilkinson picks up the win here on a nice Saturday night here at Evergreen Speedway. John Carlson in second spot, followed by Nick Gunderson. Nick Holton and uh, Jillian Lapato. We'll take it down to Kyler down at the Angel of the Winds Winter Circle. We won't get to see a fence climbing. Nope. Doug is a lot smarter than John when it comes to that. Here we go. <laughs> down here with Nick Gunnarsson, P3 tonight. You and uh, Nick Holton put on quite a battle there for a few laps early on. Yeah, it's uh, hard to get around people with, with the cars being so close together and speed and stuff and handling wise, but I'm having a little issue with my engine. So in the corners, it's not running very good and making it bounce and pop. And so I wanted to be up there with uh, John and them to battle for that lead, but couldn't. Do we need to thank for coming home third tonight? Uh, I got to thank uh, car owner Jerry Funden and uh, happy birthday to him, too. And uh, MGM Designs and uh, Gunnarsson Speed Shop and my dad for helping us out a lot. And the rest of the crew. Nick Gunderson comes home third place tonight. Down here with the Cowboy, John Carlson. You're not climbing the fence tonight. You've done it twice this year. What more did you need besides a couple uh, couple bumps with the bumper to get the victory tonight? Yeah, that would have been about it with Doug. Uh, put a little bumper to him. He was running pretty good. He gets off the corner really good. I didn't see the checker in that last lap, so I thought I gave him a bump and run. That was a finish coming up for that last ordeal, I thought. But, uh, oh, well, that's how it goes. And I told him, actually, thanks for not letting me climb the fence tonight. Gave me a break for next time. <laughs> Who do you need to thank for your second place uh, finish tonight? Uh, same people as always. I got my buddy Tony Hill that we work out of his shop. Uh, a little small business, fireplace guy that I do stuff for. So if you guys need fireplace work, hit me up. <laughs> got the Cowboy P2 tonight. Down here in Angel of the Winds, Victory Lane with Doug Wilkinson. And uh, you had the Cowboy John Carlson all over your rear end that entire race. How were you able to hold him off? He was very nice to me. He, he pretty much just was patient, and that's what it takes sometimes. And it worked out for us. Who do you need to thank for getting the victory tonight in the 55 car? Um, Jason Holton and Nick Holton, the 71 car, because they loaned us some rear tires. And um, Zach Larson and Bubba and my wife. Um, most of all, I just like to remember, we just lost a friend this, this week, and that was uh, Malcolm Lindbergh. 
and my mom earlier this year and Gordy uh, Oberg and um, Warren Cox and we've lost a lot already. Hopefully we can turn this world around. An emotional victory for Doug Wilkinson tonight. All right, here with the number 49 Hornet car of Calvin Miller. Last race you missed due to heat exhaustion. What have you done today to prepare in the heat? I've been staying in the shade all day and drinking everything I can see. It's not as fun as they say it is to get heat stroke and uh, hopefully I can stay out of doing that today and be able to race for nationals. And looking for your first podium, what's it going to take to get you up there today? Well, it might be a little bit rough for it's a money race tonight, so we'll have to run it in deep and uh, see how it goes, I guess, play it by ear. And how do you like the track that they call the boot? Well, it's a lot different than the Hornet track, and I think there's going to be a lot of unexperienced drivers. I've ran it once or twice before, and uh, hopefully I have an advantage of it just because of that, and we'll see how it goes. And who do you want to thank for getting to the 49 car to the track today? Oh, my mom and dad, Palfi Drywall, and everybody that comes and works on it in shop, Tanner Emery. All right, thank you, Calvin Miller, looking for his first podium this season. All right, Interstate Batteries bringing you the <coughs> annual Hornet Nationals out here at Evergreen Speedway. 50 laps make up the distance, and before we get to that, we want to remind you, HCI Steel Buildings offers premium uh, engineered commercial buildings, kits, metal carports, RV and boat covers, storage facilities manufactured right here in Arlington, Washington. Here's a lineup. In the double zero will be an in-car camera. Pretty cool one, too. Uh, the double zero of Dan Miller outside of Miller is Tanner Emery. The 81 of Bobby Fisher outside of Bobby Fisher. And the 45, Nick Beecher. The 143 car inside third row will be Damon Claiborne, Blaine Manning in the 68 outside of that. In the fourth row, Calvin Miller in the 49 with an in-car and 82 of Steve Hatton. In the fifth row, the 76 car inside with a camera, it'll be Jamie Corbett. Outside of him, in the 13, it'll be John Newbaum. Uh, in the sixth row, the 70 of Dawson Cox, who races a little bit of everything here at Evergreen Speedway. He'll have an in-car camera. Outside of Dawson in the 54X will be uh, Brendan Terrio, and uh, we look for good things out of him. In the seventh row, it's the 77 of Christian Miller. Outside, 33 of Ryan Hausenfluck. And rounding out the field in the eighth row, it's the 15th of Matt Snyder. And outside, the 16 car of Peyton Hopp. And Terrio is our points leader right now. He has a nine-point lead over Newbaum. And then Corbett in that third spot. So keep your eye on that. See how they do tonight. And we'll see how the points shake out. All right, here we go. We are going to get this thing underway. And you're going to get to see what they refer to as the boot course. It's different than anything we've seen all <laughs> season long. We uh, have <laughs> normally seen them uh, run from the north end of the facility down to the south end. But this time it's going to be a little bit different. This is the left boot instead yeah, of the right exactly. boot. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> this is the Italian boot. And, uh, well, I don't want to go down that road. Nice shot by Miller. As I mentioned, he's going to have a couple of onboard cameras for us. One front, out the front and back. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like that camera out back. I that is cool. A lot. And we are underway as they are uh, chasing Tanner Emery down. They'll take that access road to make the right-hand turn down on the short shoot there. And then hard left onto the 3 eighths. The yellow flag is out, Steve. I don't know why. I don't either. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, you know, I'm going to guess that the NASCAR officials didn't like that uh. start. I'm going to guess that the, there was a little bit of a jump there. You don't think Beecher took advantage of a flagman, do you? Nick? Yeah, uh, he yes. was. His I dad did. taught I him do. everything. He did. taught him everything he thinks he knows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're going to see a little bit of a different look for a very, very good reason on the 7D of Dawson Cox. And uh, our community here at Evergreen Speedway lost one of the good ones in uh, uh, gentlemen we referred to as the maniac Malcolm Lindbergh who ran figure eights out here for many many years in the 90s and the early 2000s and Malcolm just absolutely had the best smile of anybody uh, out here he was just had no fear at all and a ton of respect by everybody who was involved in this place and and I always take great pride in the fact that uh, there was only one thing that Malcolm was afraid of, and that was a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he did not like to talk on the radio or do public address interviews. Green flag is out. They're yep. back at it. All right, Malcolm, we're going to be thinking about you during this one and uh, for the rest of the season, too. So let's try it again. And a great shot, again, by Dan Miller in the double zero cars. We watched Tanner Emery take the early lead there's that double zero the white card hugging the bottom of turn four coming off of the three eighths course 
And now they'll run down and uh, make that uh, left-hand turn onto the fifth mile. Some great yeah. traffic right there for it that is. second spot. Man, they're two, they're about four wide right there for a minute. So as they go down, make a right turn. I can't even keep my left and my rights together. I know. This is throwing On to turn three, and, and around they come. But a great battle right there with Miller, Fisher, Beecher, Manning. That whole group just really going at it right now. And Tanner Emery pulling away in the early parts. 50 laps for the Hornet Nationals here at Evergreen Speedway Interstate Batteries. Like we mentioned, every time has behind, been behind this group since we put them out on the track. A long time ago, there's been some pretty creative drivers that have made their way through this. A, a great starter for moving up into a mini stock or a street stock or a pro late model. I mean, look at Chad Fitzpatrick. He kind of made that whole transition out of these cars. And you can see what it's done for him in the pro late model. We'll see them next week here on Home Track Heroes. We're going to see pro late models. We're going to see the Frank Radio Outlaw figure eights. The Interstate Battery Youth Hornets, Hornets, and Stinger eights. We're going to see the uh, Super Stock figure eights and round it all out with the Northwest Motorsports Street Stock. So yeah, good that show. one could be a really, really good main event. Yeah, it, I, I'm looking forward to that one. That one's going to be good. So make sure and join us here on CW11 next Sunday, 5 o'clock on your uh, channel 11 dial and also check it out on youtube as well evergreen speedway has been putting it up on the evergreen speedway youtube channel as well and like we always really appreciate the comments that we get the suggestions that we get heard from rob dees uh who we'll see him next week in a pro late model yeah and uh it turns out i've been <coughs> calling him by a completely wrong name several times so don't hesitate to get a hold of me <laughs> we're messing up you um, don't want to do that. No, no. no we want to make sure and get this right. Because Rob's uh, uh, significant other aunt, grandma, when they get the pans back in the stands, she, they'll be looking for a come, piece of you. Oh, well. You know? I'm not hard to find. How? how uh, <laughs> why do they run different courses with these cars? Is there, I mean, what's well, the... Well, you know, the simple... And I, this, I don't mean to sound contrite. Because they can. Because kay. they're set up to do that. That's the intention when they, when they brought these cars in. It was, you know, you never knew. You could run this course on a heat race, and then you could turn around and run a completely different course on the main event some nights. So and don't and set the car up just to turn yeah, left because yeah. they'll throw a right-hander at they, you they and can mess do you that. up. Yeah, and there's been several different configurations well, They should have thrown tracks. something to Tanner Emery because, man, that cat's just out there he doing really his has. thing. He huh? really has. It's been. Emery followed by Bobby Fisher, uh, Lane Manning, Dan Miller, Damon Claiborne. And they took away the rest of them. Where did Nick Beecher go? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. There he is. I bet you that's him. No, that's not him going underneath us. <laughs> that's a great shot. Hoping to see the, the hood on the 7D. There he is coming right out. Beecher's back in about that ninth spot. There's so, Nick. Yeah. Way to go. Looks like a car slowing down there. 50 laps. Make up the distance. The interstate batteries bringing you the... Hornet Nationals and bringing you our entire night of racing here. Also want to remind you, uh, so I don't forget while we've got the time here about Natural Factors, they're one of the largest manufacturers of nutritional products and vitamins in North America. If you're looking for a new career, Natural Factors has job openings in Monroe, so grow your career with Natural Factors. So thanks to all of our partners for getting behind this joint. If you have an interest, if you own a business, or you've got some pull at a business you work at, uh, a great way to get your name out there uh, is to get a hold of the promotions department here at Evergreen Speedway Monday through Friday. They'll be happy to put together any type of plan that works for you. It looks like caution is out. We've got the uh, number 16 car in the fence, Peyton Hop. Oh, look at that. Boy, that's not in that, the fence. It is on the fence. That's a bad parking job right there. <laughs> Very well done. Let's see if we got some. Oh, uh, oh well, ouch. there you go. That was called a squeeze right here. Look at oh, this oh, shot. I'm going to shove you. Oh. 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 Wow. Nice job. <laughs> Sorry. He yeah, says that's the That's going to be interesting to see where that car gets Ooh. Uh, Who was the car that got him? I don't know. Let's see if we can find that out. Here they come now, out of the hard turn, and yeah, that's, that's just, They were just doing a little uh, that's just bumpy shove. Put them right into it, and I want to say that's the 15. That could be Matt Snyder, but it's hard to tell with that that shot and all the dust they kicked up. 